Hi, I'm Black Wright, broadcasting out of the UK. Uh, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you can like, you can subscribe, and you can share if you like. I tend to talk about um, issues that come up in the news mostly, or I kind of ferret through the news, and if there's something I think might be helpful or useful to my subscribers, I talk about it. Uh, my subscribers vary, all nationalities, races, colours, cream, gender, it doesn't really matter. Whatever I talk about is consistently to benefit someone or a community of people. Um, today, who's my community of people? It's my diaspora, it's my Jamaicans, yay! Yes, yeah, so, Graham Bentley, 45 Graham Bentley has been found, what a relief. It's amazing how, you know, when we hear things in the media um, about, especially when people go missing in Jamaica, it kind of sends chills through your spine and you're kind of thinking, whether regardless of the nationality, I hope they're safe, especially when they come from here, regardless of where they come from. If they're people that you know, you have this sense of dread when people have gone missing in Jamaica, but because they've gone missing, it doesn't mean that they're dead but some of us a, a lot of people that's the first thing that they think about them get killed or they you know something's happened to them anyway he's been found in hospital safe and sound i don't know why he didn't notify his family apparently his wife and his daughter were calling and they couldn't get in touch with him they thought the worst they got the british consulate in Involved and the police apparently didn't know he was missing. But that's what happens, you know. I often wonder how do, um, how does the system document people who are missing if nobody reports it? I mean, they can only really go on people who are reported. And it's like over in the UK, we have so many children gone missing. Some of them are reported, some of them not, for various number of reasons. And similarly, in Jamaica, we have a lot of children who have gone missing through human trafficking, sex exploitation, prostitution, organ taking their organs, all kinds of things, selling them to um, rent them out. But, you know, more positively... It is such a relief when people are found safe and sound. And um, I was reading an American article and they reckon that they had about three or four um, calls about people missing. And there was one on a boat and they found them. They were all safe. They missed the boat. They didn't bother to tell anyone that they missed the boat. They was having such a good time. They decided to stay a little longer. You know, everybody was concerned. Oh, my God, these three people are missing. And that's what happened. But there is, um, there was a man um, from America. Um, his name's Robert Dorbin. And this is like from 2012. Apparently, um, he's gone missing. Um, he was last, he reported a domestic um, violence incident. And he got himself all involved in it and made a big fuss with the police and everything. Nobody's heard of him since. So we do, there's, that remains unsolved. We do not know what's happened to him. Um, also, an Asian man just three days ago, a 63-year Asian man, he's gone missing. Um, he was living in, I think, downtown Kingston. Where was he living? Yeah, he was living in Pasley Gardens. I think that's in Kingston. Yeah, he's gone missing and they can't find him. But all I'm trying to say is that not everybody who goes missing is dead. You know, there are some valid reasons about why people go missing. Can you imagine how people just run off? People who get the opportunity to immigrate, they don't tell the authorities. And, you know, Jamaica is kind of a secretive country. It it grew up on secrecy. You know, they have this thing like, don't talk your business, don't tell people your business. And even like when I was going to Jamaica, I was warned, don't bother tell anybody you're coming, you know, all this kind of stuff. People are absolutely paranoid about not talking their business because they're afraid it's going to get out. They're afraid that they might be set up. 
all different kinds of things. So if people run off and people immigrate, they they do add to the missing people numbers. And apparently 28,000 Jamaican men are missing. 28,000. Where are they? You know, I'm sure if people die or people dead are dead, they're not going to factor in these numbers. That 28,000 doesn't take into consideration people who are incarcerated or in detention. It doesn't take into account those numbers. But 28,000 men are missing. And I can't imagine that they can hide 28,000 bodies. But they do believe that, you know, the majority of them have immigrated. But how do they um, defy the system then? How, does this, how come the system hasn't got a record of when they've left the country? Why are these people classed as missing? It doesn't make sense to me. And like when they're talking, when a lot of them saying, oh, some of them must be murdered. Some of them are dead from hypertension. Some of them have died from prostate cancer and, all, and you know, drug misuse and stuff like that. But if that's the case, they'd have a record of it. They would not be missing people. They would just be people who died or murdered. So I don't understand how 28,000 Jamaican men are missing. And they're saying it affects the economy and it affects women in the country because they've lost 28,000 men. And you've got 28,000 men who can't produce in Jamaica and add to the economy. And nobody seems to know where these 28,000 men are. Anyway, let me just, um, if you've got anyone missing, I've got a number. Um, a foreign and Commonwealth Office spokesman said, we are supporting the family of the missing, missing British Jamaica. That was before they found him. Um, Graham, his name was Graham, like I said. Graham Bentley, he was lived in the Cayman Islands for the past 22 years. And after moving there from Stonehouse in Lanarkshire last week, he travelled to Jamaica to visit the British Embassy to try and obtain his passport for his wife and newborn children. Apparently his daughter said um, he's never missed an appointment. So she had already started thinking the worst. And like I said, um, the 63-year-old Indian lecturer is missing. His name is Fiju Matthews. And this is on the 4th of October. So this is just about two or three weeks, three weeks ago. He was the Dean of the Faculty of Science at the College of Agriculture, Science and Education in Pasley Gardens, Portland who hails from Kochi, Kerala in India, and he went missing on the 4th of October. There's a reward of $200,000. That's probably Jamaican dollars. I don't know how much that translates into, but 200000 reward for anyone who knows about what's happened to this Asian gentleman, 63-year-old Fiju Matthews. They've got a picture of him in the newspapers if any of you want to look. If you're living in the area and you want to, if you know anything about it or if you've seen him. You know, because sometimes these people, they might just have decided to go away and not tell someone. But we do hope that he is safe. Um, but the 200000 is being offered through Crime Stop for information on his whereabouts. But the offer is set to expire on the 16th of November. So after um, the 16th of November, which is two weeks away, just over two weeks away, well, about three weeks, um, that reward is no longer on offer. Um, according to the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, Statin Data, more than 28,000 Jamaican men between 25 and 54 are considered missing. And that's what I was saying. I mean, how can they go missing? 28,000. That's a lot of men. Like I said, I believe the majority of them have emigrated. I really do. But, you know, um, some of the officers are saying they've been murdered, died in traffic accidents or died from health condition, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, HIV and cardiovascular diseases. But like I said... Those num if they died that way, the hospital would report it or the family would report it. 
Uh, are people dying and nobody knows because they're burying them in their back garden or something? Is there not, I wonder if there's not a system like in the UK where you report deaths when people die from diseases or health conditions or in a car accident. They're not just going to die, are they? And nobody knows. The authorities should know. There should be a system. So I don't understand why they're citing that as a possible factor out of the 28,000. According to 2017 statistics, male were outnumbering females at birth at the ratio of 1,000 1,040 to every thousand. So there was 1,040 men to 1,000 women on average. So I don't know where those women were going about shortage of men. Now they're probably a shortage of men because they're missing and they've skipped the country. That's probably why there's a shortage. But there's definitely not more men than less more women than men in Jamaica. But like I said, because of the circumstances, there probably is. And that we say, you know, you've got a lot of them incarcerated. You know, that takes away the men out of our, our numbers. Um, Ruiz Warren, sociologist and lecturer at Montego Bay Community College, said he believes that men are endangered species in Jamaica, which means they're at risk of extinction. But, you know, we hear about that all the time, about black people becoming extinct through incarceration, murder, that kind of stuff. Um, he says we see more men dying in more men dying, more men in prison, and more men becoming susceptible to crime, drug use, and being victims of murder. So in that sense, Jamaica has a serious problem because we are losing a significant segment of the population in terms of its contribution to be productive endeavors of the society. He added, "We have heard time and time again." for reasons Warren stated that black people throughout the world, not only Jamaicans, are at risk of extinction. Dr. Paul Wright, renowned medical doctor and sports medicine expert, reckons that macho Jamaicans are reluctant to seek care if they're ill, believing that whatever is wrong with them will go away. I reckon an overuse of drugs could explain death, but like I said, it doesn't explain missing people regardless unless like i say deaths are not recorded when they die that way maybe people don't want to go through the protocol maybe they have to pay something and they don't have the money i don't know and they just bury them in their backyard i really don't know because i don't understand why they bringing up things like murder when it comes to missing people if you've got any ideas please let me know and also, I'd like to know if um, people do go through a certain procedure and inform authorities when people die in Jamaica. I'm sure they have to, just like births, registering of births. But I'm just wondering if the onus is on, who's the onus on to report a death? Whose responsibility is it? Um, let me see. I believe a large majority were lost in the system because of immigration. It's hard to make a living unless you hustle. You cannot live off of your salary in Jamaica. You can't ask for a, right, a raise because of the International Monetary Fund restrictions. So that's why most men immigrate. Americans missing in Jamaica tends to be rare. Typically at the end of the investigation, the missing persons are normally found visiting a relative or staying in a nearby resort, claiming they simply wanted to spend more time on the island. A recent example of such a case happened this past February. Three US nationals, 24-year-old Trisha Forrester, 35-year-old Glenn Tristan and 42-year-old Clinton Hill, boarded the Carnival Sensation Cruise in Miami, Florida. They were reported missing on the February the 28th after the cruise docked in Ocho Rios. According to a nationwide radio Jamaica, all three nationals were accounted for three days later, safe and sound. The last one being found in Montego Bay. According to the head of the St. Anne's Police Senior Superintendent Michael Smith, the three were visiting family members when they were reported missing. The passengers stated they were going to deliver luggage to their family members who were to meet them in Ocho Rios. However, when it was time for the crews to leave, it was discovered their rooms were empty and so they were reported missing. 
Another similar case occurred on Tuesday, December the 5th, 2017, when an American woman, 40-year-old, 41-year-old Marjan Il Hassani, was reported missing in Kingston. Reports from the Halfway Tree Police Station state she checked into a hotel in Kingston on the 4th and was last seen at a gas station in the area. All attempts to get in touch with her were fruitless and in a surprising twist, she was located only days after in a guest house in Kingston. She was reported to be in good health and returned to the United States shortly after being found. May 2012, this is the guy I told you about, involves the 41-year-old Robert Durbin, went missing after being last seen in Kingston 12, carrying out charity work in the community. He had been involved in reporting disturbances, was charged with interfering, and he is yet to be found. There are many unsolved cases over the last decade and these figures do not include missing children. Um, child, missing children, child trafficking, selling children. I did. A, I actually did an article on that, particular focusing on Jamaica in one of my magazines, which can be found on www.issue, I-S for sugar, S for sugar, U-U.com forward slash black bright news. And you just have to look. There's about three of them on human trafficking. You just have to look at them and you'll see um, the one about Jamaica and where um, not only children, but, you know, adults are trafficked. And there is an issue of missing children in Jamaica ages 12 to 17. Human trafficking, sexual exploitation, child abuse, child labour, unemployment, crime and drug trade. So, yes, there is a genuine concern that some people are actually killed and murdered. I'm just concerned about the reporting of that. And um, so I remember reading something when I, was doing, when I was reading up on missing persons. They found some woman chopped up, her torso separated in her arms and her legs. I'm like, goodness gracious, you know. So there are some kind of, um, there are some really serious issues with regard to missing people, but they're not all dead. That's all I wanted to stress. Okay, bye-bye.